And uh, that, as they take, I want to invite uh, His Excellency, the Governor of Nairobi, Johnson Sakanja, and thank him most sincerely for being with us. Asante Sana, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mwangi, Oscar Van Malton, Elijah Mungai, Dr. Waweru, Ambassador Masharia, ladies and gentlemen, scholars, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Isn't this a wonderful way to start the year? This being the first Sunday. What is the triad of success? I love it. I think that will be my new slogan. I want to begin, if I may, with praise for the vision and the diligence of Equity Bank and its leadership. This vision to establish a scholarship scheme that would take in deserving scholars from across the country, young men and women of promise, and help them go as far as their ambition and ability will take them. Dr. Mwangi, you have succeeded. You have transformed the lives and prospects of thousands of young men and women across the country. The Bible says in James, <laughs> Asante. See, you know, today is a Sunday and uh, Bishop Arthur Kitonga is here. If I quote it badly, you can correct me, but I know in James 1.27 it says that religion that God the Father accepts as true, as pure, and faultless is to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. What you're doing, Dr. Mwangi, is true religion. It is God's work. Congratulations. <laughs> and truly, you're, you're building a movement. You're building a great movement across this country. So after President Ruto is done, when you're looking for running mate, I'm available <laughs> at that time. Secondly, I want to honor you, young scholars, the scholars we're commissioning today. The opportunity was given, but you're the ones who've seized it. Not all of us make use of the gifts that we receive. You have shown that you can, so I want to recognize you all, and I think we should clap for the scholars that we have here today. <laughs> young scholars, you must believe in yourselves. Believe in your ability. You have seen wonderful examples of those who've gone before you. Your background will not determine your future. It is your attitude that will determine your altitude. And let me tell you a brief story. There's a journalist who a few years ago interviewed two people. One of these persons was a high-flying tech executive with a private jet, a booming business listed on the stock exchange doing billions. He also went and interviewed somebody else who was in prison. Prison for being a bank robber and having committed murder. A thug, what you'd have called the scum of the earth. He asked them the same question. What do you attribute for where you are today? The high-flying tech entrepreneur and the prisoner. They both gave the same answer. And they said that if you had a father like I did, if you grew up where I grew up, this is the only place you'd end up. Those two were brothers. They had the same dad who was abusive. They lived in abject poverty. But the two of them had a different attitude. One said, because of this, I must succeed. And I must give my children better than I've been given. The other one gave up. It is, your it is your attitude that will determine your attitude. Do not despise your humble beginnings. I know what many of you have described here. Don't dwell in the past. The reason why the vehicle, a vehicle has a small rear view mirror but a huge windscreen is that you must look forward more than you look back. You must learn from the mistakes of the past but focus on the great future that you're going to have. Now look around you. This country needs you. In every part of our national life, from politics to agriculture, from media to education, from sport to business, we need men and women of great integrity and ability. We need men and women committed to the idea of Kenya, unity, order, 
equal opportunity and dignity for all. All of us, I am sure, have seen what happens when those in positions of responsibility fail to live up to that standard. We all know intimately the corruption, the poverty, the division that follows. So you scholars who are here today, the scholars who we are commissioning, can change that. You come from right across the Republic, so you know the power of unity. You are able and intelligent young people. I've had people 84. You know, how do you get 84? You just finish everything. But because you're able and intelligent young people, you will not tolerate mediocrity, which is a great challenge we've had as a country. You have seen yourselves in your lives the power of equal opportunity. So I'm sure you will give back what you have received. Again, remember the phrase in Matthew that freely you have received and freely you must give. Ladies and gentlemen, as governor of the capital of Kenya, Nairobi County, and as a leader, I am personally also committed to ensuring the next generation, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds, get a chance in life, get an opportunity to reach their full potential. That the equalization of opportunities becomes the prerogative of all of us. Our administration is committed to education, Dr. Mwangi, just as you are. This financial year, we have allocated 858 million towards supporting 120,000 needy students across the county of Nairobi. As I was explaining to you, in the last 10 years, the bursary program in Nairobi spent three billion, but in the first year of us being in office, we've already spent half of that, 1.2 billion for our children. We have increased bursaries to seven million, thank you, from six million to seven million per ward. And finally, I know we are pressed for time, we have a program that is transforming education. Many of you do not know that one out of four children in Nairobi don't go to school because of hunger. Last year in August, we, we started Dish in a County, a program that targets to give our children food in schools. Already we are feeding 80,000 children. I have successfully built 10 kitchens. And starting tomorrow in this new town, because you finished those kitchens, 180,000 children will get a meal every day at five shillings only as you move towards making it to 50,000, as you roll out the next phase. So congratulations, you're the trustees of our nation's posterity. When you see yourself, see yourself as that person you want to be, not just as a student, see yourself as that lawyer, as that uh, computer scientist, as that doctor, because you can do it. May God bless you, Asante Nisana, and congratulations. Thank you.